The following is a presentation of the Match Talk Podcast Network. It's time for the ODU Wrestling Monarch Matcast, a show dedicated to all things related to the Old Dominion Wrestling Program. On the web at monarchmatcast.com. Now, here's your host, three time National Wrestling Writer and Broadcaster of the Year, and 2004 ODU alumnus, Jason Bryant. And back again, Monarch Nation, another episode of the OD Wrestling Monarch Madcast. Jason Bryant here with you in the balmy summertime here, whether you're in Virginia or where I'm at in the land of 10,000 lakes up here in Minnesota. Our guest today, the newest member of Monarch Nation, assistant wrestling coach Stephen Rodriguez. Stephen, welcome to the Monarch family. Welcome. I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready to go, and let's do this. All right, so let's let's just enter. This is a full introductory episode because uh, the wrestling fans are like, okay, uh, we know a little bit about this guy. You were an All American at the University of Illinois. Wrestled uh, most of your career at 141 before, uh, I, I guess, getting on full feed, going 165 for your senior campaign where you placed. But uh, backing it up, uh, you you grew up in New York, and when did when did you start wrestling? I started wrestling when I was five. And is that is it because a family members got you wrestling, or was it just something you were interested in? I mean, how did you get your start? So, so my dad was around it a little bit. He actually never wrestled, but it was my uncle who was around it, and my dad got into it about twenty something years ago. My uncle needed an assistant coach, so he asked my dad if he was interested. My dad fell in love and got me got me around it. So I started going to wrestling tournaments when I was four or five years old, and I enrolled in my first youth club when I was. Uh, Five and a half, and th- that part of New York. I mean, there's. I mean, New York's a great wrestling state. I mean, in all styles, whether it be the high school collegiate style, freestyle, or Greco-Roman. But uh, you know, w- when you're little, at what point do you realize that I-, I like this? I like going to wrestling practice. I like this as my main sport. I would say, I would say, going seventh, going into eighth grade is when I started to get super serious about it. I was a, I was a seasonal guy. And up until then, and I would love wrestling from November to March when the U season came around, and then when baseball season came, I was really excited about baseball. But it was seventh going into eighth grade. Now in New York, you could wrestle in, in the varsity when you're in seventh grade, and I did that. So once I wrestled in seventh grade for the varsity, I, I fell in love with it, and I wanted to do it year-round, and it's been my life ever since. And coming out of New York, it's it's very tough to get to the state tournament. A little tougher back in the day when there was just one class. But uh, you know, what's it like to try to battle through and make a state tournament in the state of New York? Yeah, it's definitely something that's unique being being from being from New York. But I was always committed, and, and uh, for me, I was always the goal was to be a state champion. So just to become a state qualifier was, was never a goal of mine. And um, I think I always I, I, I saw past just making the state tournament and um I, I never really thought too much about just being a state qualifier it was always about being a state champ coming out of high school you've got you've got some fargo medals you you know you did the freestyle greco thing and then uh you ultimately decide to go to rutgers first well first of all why, why the choice to go to rutgers uh it was it was close to home at the time and then there was a coach Corey cooperman who i was uh who i was pretty close with at the time and so I, I originally committed there. Um, I've always wanted to go to a big school. I always wanted to go to – I actually always wanted to go to Iowa. and But I had, did have a good relationship with, with Corey, and we kind of hit it off from, from day one. And then when he left to go to Illinois, I, I ultimately ended up following him. But I did uh, – you know, Joe Pollard and Coach Goodell and Coach Leonardo were, were very good to me, and – um, so I, I did enjoy the, the time I spent with them. Well, that it does answer the next question, though, is why why the move to Illinois? Of course, uh, Corey Cooperman uh, went to Blair, as did Mark Perry, who was there at the time. And then, uh, you know, Big Ten Champagne, big school, big town, big time. Uh, you know, how quickly did it take you to get acclimated to life in the Big Ten? I would say it took me about a year. So I moved out there. I actually left the day after Christmas, my true freshman year. And it took me about, yeah, it took me about a year. So then I tried, I wrestled 
freshman in a few tournaments. My freshman year, I ended up winning the, the junior fields at the time, and then I ended up wrestling 50 kilos at the junior world team trial. So, um, and then the following year, I tried to make 133, and that was ended up being too much for me. And then I wrestled 41, and I wrestled in every open. I remember that first semester because DJ Futrell was the starter at the time, and then. He got hurt the first match of the second uh, semester. We were wrestling Purdue, and I remember I wrestled that following week against Indiana and uh, Indiana, and we had Ohio State and and Penn State. Um, so I didn't have a great year that year, but once I wrestled that season, was in the varsity lineup, was when I started to feel acclimated and when I started to love it there. Yeah, you know, situation you mentioned BJ Futrell, who was an All American. Now uh, he was basically medically disqualified later on in his career. As in, you know, he's he competed a little bit on the freestyle scene after that. But uh, in, in terms of having to fill a spot on a teammate like that, you know, you're fighting for the spot, and you've got a guy that's ahead of you that's that's pretty solid. What's the mindset for an athlete that's that's sitting there? Uh, you know, I, I, for lack of a better term, you're on the bench at the time to to get the opportunity to to get in that lineup. I mean, what goes through your mind? What changes for you as an athlete? Yeah, I mean, the cliche thing to say is, you know, you're, you're ready at all times. But at that time, mentally, um, I was, I, I definitely thought my season was over really after the minimum, I thought. I thought that I didn't do enough to win the spot. And there were some open tournaments I was going to go to. But for me, I, I thought my, uh, my, my season was over. So um, in terms of competing. So I remember when BJ couldn't wrestle, I remember we were going on a road trip to Nebraska and Minnesota and it was a Thursday morning. We were leaving and I remember getting a phone call because I didn't end up going on that trip at the time I had a neck injury, but I remember getting a call that BJ was out and they didn't know when he was going to come back, if he was going to be able to come back at all. And I remember Mark Perry calling me from Nebraska. They had just weighed in. And called me and told me I was going to be wrestling the following week. And just, I remember getting a phone call, being a little bit of shock of, oh, man, you know, this is my time. I got to make the most of it. And I wrestled the following week against Indiana. I ended up winning. But after that match, I didn't win another match actually the rest of the year. I was one in, I think, six in Big Ten duels. And then I was 0-2 at the Big Ten tournament. So, obviously, that was a little bit of a wake-up call to me that I needed to get my act together. And, um and I ended up hurting my knee, actually, right when school ended. I tore my ACL, so I was actually out from June all the way up until November of the following year. I wrestled and wrestled my first match back against at the Northeast Duels against George Mason. And there's a couple things that, that go through your mind there. One, you get hurt. There's the recovery that, that's got to f- impact you. But, you know, when you see a teammate as as high quality as BJ uh, go down, how much does that kind of weigh on you and the rest of the team in that situation? Well, it definitely weighed on the team because we also had a heavyweight, Pat Walker, who was having a really good year, ranked in the top 20 at the time, who broke his ankle, and he was out for the year. And then with BJ being out, it definitely um, hurt the morale of the team because we had our whole team back, and I think we took the final, the previous year we went to the Final Four and the National Duels, and we had we had four returning All Americans, so we we did have high hopes for that for that year. But guys went down, and again I had to step in, and I, at that time I didn't do my job, um, so it was a good life lesson. Now as they take in the coaching. Moving forward, you go you go forty one, and at what point does one forty one become a struggle for you? Because uh, you know fourteen, fifteen, you're forty one, fifteen, sixteen, you're at sixty five. So it kind of kind of leads to believe that maybe making forty one was tough. Yeah, I mean it was always really tough to make it. It was probably after the uh, Big Ten my junior year. I had a really bad Big Ten tournament, and after that. I, I kind of made up my mind that the next year I was going to go one one sixty five. Um, we had a guy on the team named Jackson Morris who took fourth that year, and it kind of solidified it for me, just because I was like, man, I, I, I do really well with this guy in the off season, and this guy took fourth, had a great tournament, and I kind of looked at it where I was going to get to wrestle with returning NCAA champ Isaiah Martinez and Zach Brunson all the time. I was going to feel better. And more than ent- more than anything mentally, it it was just such a relief going up because the thought of having to cut down again when school started was always weighed so heavily on me. And 
and with more than anything mentally, I was always capable of, of the performance I had my senior year, but just mentally, I was, was never, I was never dialed in by the end of the year. I always I was almost counting the days down if I was going to be, you know, honest with myself. And I was like, how am I going to beat a guy like Logan Steber and beat some of these better guys if I'm not ready, ready to go mentally? So I made the decision to go up, and it was definitely the best decision I could have made. And the focus stops being on making weight. The focus becomes on actually improving and, and, and making sure the technique is fine-tuned. How much did you really see your technique improve when you were up up a couple weights? I don't know if I necessarily thought my technique got so much better, but just I had so much more energy, and mentally I was excited to come to practice every day. And then more energy, my quality of life improved. I was, I was just balanced. And I was excited about achieving my goals where in the past I was, especially once, you know, once the big 10 season hit and you're winging in Friday, Sunday for about six weeks straight, it's been the focus becomes about making weight. I remember my favorite thing you know, Sunday night, Monday, just because I was able to eat a real meal. So, but now it was about wrestling and in terms of just feeling good all the time and being excited to compete and, this, the whole season was so much fun for me. And when, when your quality of life is good, you're going to perform in, in school and wrestling. And I definitely did that my senior year. When you get to that tournament, Madison Square Garden, this is this. I mean, you're from New York. The Nationals are in New York. This is, you know, describe the moment going into that tournament. What was it like? I mean, that was something I always circled my calendar when I did find out that you know, the Nationals were going to be in New York my senior year. You know, it was it was a special, you know, a special thing for me being, you know, 45 minutes from home. And that's something I always circled and something that I was like, I'm always going to, I'm going to have my best, best year and best tournament that year. Um, but I just, the, the whole year leading up to it, getting to wrestle in front of my hometown and ending in such an historical arena, it was, it was something that I'll always remember you know, the rest of my life of being able to, you know, become an all American and, and achieve achieve a goal that I've wanted for so long in, in that in that uh in that place. Now, one of the, the most brutal situations for an athlete, it can be the most brutal and it can be the most vindicating. In your case, it was likely one of the most vindicating four two win in the blood round over uh Welsh of Purdue. This is you've locked it up. I mean you moved up, you've had a good year uh, you're performing really well, and then you know that blood round. The the all American. You, you you get to hear Steven Rodriguez. All you're going to be an all American. Explain that moment. Yeah, I mean it was it was a little bit surreal. It's uh, I remember that match so well. Just was more nervous that match than anything. But I never ever never doubted myself that I was going to lose. You know, I went down two nothing, and I got ridden out actually the whole period. So he had like two minutes twenty. 40 seconds of riding time and and I was down to nothing but I again I never never lost focus I knew that I was going to be able to get to my offense as the match went along I knew I was you know my, my leg attacks I read, wrestled him at the big tens and I had got to my leg attacks pretty easily and I was able to ride him but I remember taking him down and, and turning him in the second period and, and being able to ride him out and just knew that I had locked it up right there just mentally I had you know I thought I had cracked him and the, the, he took neutral the, the third period, and uh, I kind of just fended him off. But I just remember that the feeling I had uh, it was almost it was a high from that point up until I would say the finals of the next day when I got to stand on the podium. Just such a such a relief and such a such a good feeling being able to to do that um, in, in my home state. Did you find yourself having any doubts during that season if if you did make the right decision moving up? I never doubted it at all. Once I decided to make the decision, I remember because about two weeks after the season, and I was already like 170 pounds, and I had always had such good spring, summer, and, and fall leading up in the previous years. And then again, mentally, I was was never there for the end. I was just coming in, going how I like to say, I was almost going through the motions. And once I decided, I remember in the spring, uh, we had camps the following, uh, the following day, and I remember going to, to Coach Hess's office and just telling him, like, I'm, I'm going to go 165 next year. And he, he was totally, totally about it. And that 
gave me a lot of confidence because that showed that he, he believed, believed in me. He thought it was a really good idea. And from, from then on, I, I never doubted my, never doubted, you know, I never really looked back. I knew I was going to have, you know, great training partners with Isaiah, Zach Brunson, you know, Mark, Mark Perry being a 165 pounder. So I was never, I never doubted it at all. And I, I was, I was so ready to go so fired up and I had a really good off season yet again. And, and that's just uh, catapulted into the season. Once the college career is over, you spend a year at Stanford out on the farm, just one of the most beautiful campuses on the planet. Uh, I had a chance to go out there and announce the Pac-12s that year, which was actually pretty cool. But uh, what what made you want to get into coaching? Well, I knew I was always going to be in the coaching ever since I was I was a little. I've always loved loved to mentor other guys and help them achieve their goals. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a I'm a wrestling junkie and. I want I want to be able to build something special wherever I go, and I want to be able to help guys get on the podium and become national champions, and you know, exceed in life outside of that. And there was never a question of what I was going to do after I graduated. Uh, it was just a matter of where I was going to go. What did you learn that year with uh, with Coach Borelli, Coach Blake, and the crew out there? You know, m- more than anything, what I learned, especially being at a place like Stanford, you now. Be, being a coach, like, you have an idea of what goes on in, in a, on a daily basis, but until you're actually in it, you, you don't really go know what's going on. And what I mean by that is you know, I know that coaches have to recruit and you have to fundraise and you have to run practice, but until I was fully in it, uh, I, I learned so much in, on how to run a program and how to fundraise, how to recruit, how to, you know, how to train guys. And I learned so much, and um, you know, my, my ultimate goal is to be a head coach one day. And I know that that experience of being at Stanford is going to help me help me do that in the future. Stanford also brings the the high emphasis on academics, like you know, all colleges do. But at Stanford, it's it's a different story. So, what what did you learn about the rigors of what some of these guys are doing that that are that are carrying like four point and in like some of these crazy tough majors that Stanford has, and trying to balance their lives as a Division one athlete being a coach? Yeah, it was definitely different from from what I was used to at, at, at Illinois in terms of guys were just so focused on their career after wrestling. But in terms of if you want to be a head coach one day, you're going to have to learn to coach different types of guys. And I think that's what Stanford helped me with is that learning to connect with and learning to motivate guys in different ways. Now I'm always used to that, that Iowa style of, of wrestling and of coaches being in your face and being real tough, but, being able to adapt to a place like Stanford and seeing what guys were, were doing outside of the room. One, it was, it was motivating to me. It was inspiring to me because, you know, the guys that go to Stanford and the guys that are going to these, these great schools are the ones that are going to be changing the world one day is what I, I tell people. And uh, yeah, it was, it was an awesome, awesome experience. I learned so much from, from being, from being out there and, and I learned so much from even the guys that I coached. You make the move from California back to New York. You you coach some club for a year, and what was it like getting back home and coaching for a little bit? You know, I, I liked it. I uh, for me, you know, I was I was back I was back home, and uh, the club was called uh, Iowa Style. His name is John John Deagle. He had helped me a lot in, in high school and achieving achieving my goals. So we had talked about it for for a little bit, and. At the time, I thought it was a good good opportunity for me to, to come back and uh, kind of establish my career in, in, in high school and in youth. And uh, you know, I, I did. I got to coach with my dad this year, and that was something that's special to me. I know that was one of my dad's dreams to, to get to always coach with me at, at my high school. And um, but yeah, it was in terms of me growing as a person. You know, <clears throat> I, I think it was good for my development because now I kind of saw both sides of the spectrum, but it was about, in the, you know, about halfway through in the springtime, actually, and I remember getting a call from Daryl Thomas, who was a teammate of mine, and I was like, man, I got to I gotta get back in the, in the college coaching. Um, in terms of me growing as a person, professionally and personally, I knew that college coaching is where I needed to be, and 
um, I ended up making a decision to go to ODU. Yeah, and then that, that kind of fills the gaps here because uh, Coach Dixon, who had just left to ta- return to his alma mater at Indiana, was with the program for, for 13 years, I think. You know, 13 of Steve Martin's 14. And then Daryl quickly has been rising. I mean, people are raving about how Daryl Thomas is in, in the room and with recruiting and with kids. And so he's immediately promoted up to associate head coach. That leaves a gap on the staff. And then, boom, oh, great. We got two Illini on the staff. <laughs> no, two former Illini on the staff. And uh, so, my, so my question is, obviously, the relationship is there with Daryl Thomas, but uh, you know what? What made that uh, relationship uh, that you feel that he had to give you a call for this position? You know, Daryl and I have I've always been pretty close over the years, and you know, I saw him at the you know NXSC Nationals this year, and every time we'd get together, all we would do is, is talk about wrestling, and he would tell me his goals for himself and goals for the program, and once he he gave me that call. Um, and I know what Daryl's about. You know, I, I know that Daryl wants to be be a head coach, and I know he wants to be able to build that program, you know, to, to, to the next level. And for me, getting to work with a guy I was teammates with, a guy I had hung out with and trained with in, in college, I think it was it was a no brainer. And you know, we're both young, we're both hungry, and in terms of being on the same page on a coaching staff, I think that's extremely important. You know, we wrestled together. Steve Martin's an Iowa guy, and he we all kind of are in the same system. And sometimes you have coaches that in other programs that wrestled in different programs, and they don't have the, the same vision for the program, and they have deferring goals. And, you know, you see some of the best teams out there, you know, their coaching staff clicks. And I know our coaching staff's going to click. We all come from the same – we're all cut from the same cloth, and – it's for me. It's it's an exciting time to to be a monarch. What did you know about Old Dominion prior to getting the call? So I knew it was in Virginia Beach, and I knew obviously of Steve Martin. You know, being a wrestling wrestling guy, wrestling junkie, knowing his uh, you know how Steve is, and how what I like most about Steve is how there's he's a straight shooter, and and I need to be around guys who are gonna gonna be honest with me, guys who are gonna be honest with the guys, and um, obviously, I, I knew of you know I had wrestled Chris McCarty a couple times in college, and so I knew of him, and I knew Jack Deckow, who was from Illinois. So it's definitely a program that was always on on my radar. Always a program that I followed just through guys from that I knew had went there. And when when Daryl called, it was uh, it was something for me that it was like, when do I get on board? Man, that recruiting that recruiting guide must be actually working because uh, geographically that means yes, there is an actual uh, part of campus that is in Virginia Beach. So everybody think it is Virginia Beach. That's I guess that's good for recruiting, even though it does technically exist in the city of Norfolk. So uh, hey, yeah. no no fault there. Push the uh, Virginia Beach Regional <laughs> Training Center model there. There we go. But uh, in the yeah. time you've been there, I mean, it's only been a couple weeks since you've been in, in Hampton Roads. What do you think of it so far? I mean, I love love the area. Love the area in terms of there's things to do. There's obviously the beach that's 20 minutes away. There's there's good weather, good food, and you know, in terms of professionally of working and being able to sell guys on Virginia Beach and being able to sell guys that we have four All Americans that are are in the program and you know Daryl and myself and Chris McCarty all still young enough where we could wrestle with the guys every day and I, I think that's very important in terms of being on the mat developing guys and going out and, and recruiting and getting guys to kind of buy into our system and buy into me and Daryl and Steve and, and Chris and that that to me is fun is is getting guys to, to buy into you buy into your system and and then develop them into becoming all Americans and, and, and national champions What's it like to coach with a guy that you've wrestled with a couple times, not as your teammate in Daryl Thomas, but as an opponent with Chris McCotty? I mean, I think it's good. I mean, in terms of, again, I know what Chris is about. I know he was a fierce competitor when when he wrestled, and I think we all bring a unique style. You know, we all have our own style of wrestling, which I think is, is good in terms of developing guys, but... We all have all different personalities, but I think in terms of where our mindset is or where we see the program, I think that's all the same. And, you know, he actually beat me twice in college, but, you know, I, I put that past me now, and now we get to work together to build, you know, to build Old Dominion. 
when you look at immediate goals, what are some things that you came in to that wrestling room right there uh, on, on campus, which, uh, which by the way, when I was there, campus looked a lot different. Where, the building where the wrestling room is, yeah, that, that was an add-on, and there was a giant field house that was, yeah, there – Basically, there's dorms there. That was a parking lot when I was there. Okay, so uh, this, the school has undergone a ton of changes, and now it's undergoing a coaching change with uh, with, with you coming in and, and Mike Dixon heading back to his alma mater. So immediate goals. I mean, you, you talk about rebuilding a program or, or building a program and, and taking it to higher levels. I mean, what does that actually sound like in your mind? I mean, immediate goals is I want to get I want to get three, four guys on the podium. I mean, next year, you know, our better guys with being, you know, Larry Early and Selden Wright, you know, being 65, 57, 65, you know, those are guys I'm going to work closely with. And I, you know, those are two guys are both NCAA qualifiers with, you know, Larry Early was two and two last year and you know him being from Oak Park. And I know what he's about. I know what kind of talent he has. And I know that he's certainly capable of, of being high in the podium. And the same thing with Selden. And I, I want to be able to get guys on on the podium. I want to get you know Old Dominion. Old Dominion was 50th last year. I want to you know help them get back into the top 25. And all you need for that is, is, is a few guys, and it's mentoring a few guys to to get on the podium and to buy into what I'm what I'm preaching. Yeah. So my my goal next year is I want to get guys on the podium. I want to get two three guys on the podium, and I, I want to be back in the top 25. Being able to, to to lace up and scrap with guys that, you know, you mentioned Larry Early. He came in uh, as a transfer from Minnesota. Pretty high accolades in, in high school. Selden Wright, uh, Virginia State champion, you know, wealth of talent. What is it going to take or what can you bring to the puzzle that will help them get to that next step? Well, for me, you know, having a big, a big 10 background and still being young enough where I could wrestle is, I'm going to be working extremely close, being able to wrestle with those guys and being able to show them, you know, technically and mentally what it's going to take to, to achieve their goals. And I think more important technically is, is mentally is getting them to to buy in and but buying in. Is, I mean, by living, living the right lifestyle and the lifestyle is, is all aspects of your life of socially, academically and, and athletically taking care of all those things. And, more than anything, I've always preached lifestyle, and lifestyle is, is guys completely committing themselves to the process is what I always say all the time, and that being socially, academically, and athletically, of uh, doing all, all the right things, doing well in school, taking care of things off the map that you need to take care of, and when you take care of those things, and when school's going well and you have a balanced lifestyle, your wrestling is going gonna, is gonna to do better. When you look around campus, I mean, what, what were your first impressions when you stepped on campus in Norfolk? I, man, I, I was extremely impressed. Um, I mean, I, I was already sold when, when Daryl and Steve had already called me. I didn't even have to go down there just in terms of their mindset and what they're about and wanting, wanting to help them. But being, being on campus, being, being in Norfolk, being in a, in a small little city, I mean, I, I loved it. And it's a little bit slower pace of life than what I'm used to in New York and California, which I like. Because for me, I was always at my best when I simplified things. And Norfolk is definitely a simplified uh, simplified place. Yeah, I always explain it to, like, my wife and I, we came down. When we were we were dating, we came down to the Virginia Duels. And she's like, why does it take so long? I was like, no, nah, you go out to get, to eat. You go to, like, a Chili's or something. It's it's an, it's an outing. It's an ordeal. It takes a while. It's a slower pace, laid back. You get your get your glass of sweet tea, you're good to go. So uh, that, that fast-paced New York lifestyle, it eh, doesn't quite work. But what I like about what campus has become is it used to be pretty much a commuter school. Now it's uh, become one of, the, one of the, the top institutions in the state of Virginia. Virginia, and it's got a little bit of that big time feel with a little bit of that small school feel, all mixed into one. Oh, mo- most certainly. I mean, it's such a diverse place. Obviously, being a big Navy base, but Norfolk is extremely diverse, and you know we have guys on the team that are from all over the country, which I think is really unique. Because you know, being at Illinois, I was one of the few out of state guys on the team. But I think for you know these guys that are coming out of state, they'll bond the world because they're all. They're all kind of in the same boat. They're all from across the country, so it's, they have no choice but to be real close. So um, that's kind of what, what, what where I see it is that you're having guys that are, are maybe that didn't go to a, 
a big school, big state school, and they're from all over the country. So I think it's a good thing. One thing too is the Illinois tie between uh, you know Daryl's from Illinois and you you and him wrestled at the University of Illinois. There's a lot of Illinois kids that have been recruited to Old Dominion over the years. How much do you think that that's going to help with y'all? Your tie to the the uh, the state. They're they're familiar with you guys having watched you wrestle in college. I mean, it's all about building relationships, and you know, for me being in being in Illinois, I have relationships that I have built over the years, and. I think a lot of these guys, they know what I'm about. They know what kind of mindset I'm going to bring. And for me, it's, I think it's going to be pretty special now to see the next generation coming up and the, and, and getting guys the buy-in to, to Monarch Nation and, and getting as, as many, many guys down there to, uh, to Virginia Beach. We touched on Steve Martin a little bit, but uh, interesting personality that he is. I mean, I've known him since uh, we were wrestling against his teams when I was in high school and uh, kind of got a dry, almost, uh, wait a minute, what kind of sense of humor does Steve got? He's, he, he can be really, really funny when, when you let him uh, let loose a little bit. And, uh, you know, what's, what's that relationship been like with Steve having to work with him in the office uh, in just a short time you've been there? I mean, Steve has been a straight shooter with me since he, he called me from the very beginning. I, you know what you're getting from Steve Martin. There is no beating around the bushes with Steve. He's going to be extremely honest with you. And, I, again, I respect that. I'm used to it. Again, I was, you know, Mark Perry and Jim Heffern both being Iowa guys and being coached by an Iowa guy in high school. I know what I'm getting myself into. And <laughs> Steve definitely has a uh, Steve definitely has a soft side to him. But you know where you stand. And for for – you to work with the guy, you to have a relationship like that. You got to know where you stand. You got to know if you're doing the right things, uh, you know, to be able to have to be successful. Been talking with new Monarch Wrestling Assistant Coach Stephen Rodriguez. Follow him on Twitter at srod141. He's on the road recruiting, and it's going to be a busy summer for uh, the young Monarch coaching staff. Is now Steve is now like the senior member. I mean, he's like got got you guys by like twenty some years. So it's uh, it's it's mm-hmm. Steve's now got to look over you. Ah, you kids! But uh, any any words of uh, welcome for Monarch Nation out there who are hearing you uh, talk about the program and your position here for the first time? Yeah, again, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. I want to be able to help help guys achieve their goals. I'm ready to build this program. And, again, I'm fired up. I'm excited. I'll be out in Fargo next weekend. So any of you uh, young whippersnappers out there, come say hello to me. And I'll be, uh, I'm excited to coach Team New York and uh, help guys get on that podium in Fargo. Well, Fargo, that's that. You just said the magic word because I'll be there as well. That'll be my twentieth Fargo coming up. But we can we can share some of those war stories uh, once the competition's over. Stephen, thanks for the time, man. And uh, well, I guess we'll see you in about a week. All right, take care, Jason. Thanks for having me. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.